it's one of those fantastic stories that you rarely see. I really love my home and didn't want to go anywhere. The interest in hockey became like a drug for many people. It's what our city is famous for. Forsberg. From Moto Sweden, Peter Forsberg. A generation like that will we'll never see it again. We'll never see it again. Canadians know the look of a northern town in autumn. The tiny bustling main drag and the stacks on the horizon, steam belching from the mill. 35,000 people, hockey is everything there. It's uh, all blue colored, you know, you work uh, in factories. It's almost like everyone knows everyone. I think it's, uh, it's a perfect place to grow up. And of course, hockey. The only game in town. No hockey night looks a little different. The passion that you see in, in, in Örnsköldsvik, you, you don't see it in the other towns. Örnsköldsvik, 600 kilometers north of Stockholm. If you're a non-Swede, just trying to pronounce the name will draw a wry smile from the locals. Please don't laugh at the way I pronounce it. No, no, that was good, that was good, that was good. They know it as Sweden's Hockey Bethlehem, the home of Moda, the most storied franchise in the Swedish league, and the hockey home. 26 NHL players. There's a case to be made that Aaron Schultzvik is the greatest hockey factory in the world. I think it's incredible having those legendary players coming from this little tiny town. Just my junior team, I think seven guys that are the junior team that made the NHL. But why? What's the secret? I've heard a lot of people wondering about it. Oh, there are theories. I don't know, it can't be the water. <laughs> Maybe. People say it's the water, but I don't, I don't believe that. <laughs> well, maybe not the water, or the northern lights, or all that ice. But we did keep hearing about one very special coach. We had a fantastic coach and, and trainer there too, Anders Melinder. He was the coach uh, at the hockey gymnasium where all the players went. He had a big impact. He challenged us in, in many ways and made everything a uh, competition. He's a, he's a great man and a, and a great, uh, great teacher. Melinda drew inspiration, not just from North America, but from the old Soviet hockey system as well. I was invited to the Russian practice, and I got a new view too, and I took a little bit from that, this and so on, and make our own mix here. So what's the best answer to why here? Why, the, why that many players from this place? It's the same uh, story as when Roger Bannister went uh, under four minutes on, on the mile. When he had done it, then there was many more at least who could run the same time as him. And as we started with the Forsberg, with Neslund. They thought, if he could do it, I can do it. The young guys come and they looked at maybe uh, the old man, knee markers, if you did. Like they, they did it. It's not that big of a hurdle. They know it's possible to become a, one of the best players in the world as long as you work hard. Moto calls itself the heart of hockey, with all the swagger that implies. They grow their own talent, better than anyone else. They take a lot of pride in, in trying to produce their own players too. I think a lot of pro sports, uh, you buy uh, foreign players or from other countries, but, but up there they, they want to try to get their own players from their, their own city. I uh, was interviewed by New York Times, and they have counted out that with the, the produce of so many players from Arches Week and Mood Hockey, the city should have had, I think, about 13 million inhabitants. But why Erdschwolzweek, and not one of thousands of other northern hockey towns? Water, midnight sun, and whatever you call it, the air, or... No, that's nonsense. Hard work, that's it. <laughs>